<laughs> I'm Wayne Kramer, and and uh, and uh, and uh, we're here today talking about this footage we're seeing with. My name is Michael Davis, sometimes called Mike and MD, and sometimes called Miguel Dubois by my friend Dennis. Well, that would be me, Dennis Machine Gun Thompson. Um, Sometimes they call me Denny Boy. Sometimes they call me Idiot. Sometimes they say, hey, you. <laughs> but I'm, I play the drums. Michael, you play what? The bass? Michael played bass. I was a bass player. This, this is all stuff from uh, a long time ago. This is the area where we all moved in. We all first moved in together to Artist Workshop. This is the castle, but this is in the, the same area. We moved in down the street. Down the street. Alley, but yeah. this, this was our neighborhood mm -hmm. yeah. when we first all moved in together mm -hmm. and made the commitment to go yeah. full blast. Yeah, because it was like, campus. Yeah, it was like a uh, bohemian neighborhood <laughs> where you could have long hair and you could play music loud and you could smoke reefer and, and nobody all, much cared. The, all, yeah. the alternative lifestyle. Yeah. Where we sort of were gravitationally attracted to each other. There's the Minister Plamondon. Minister of Defense in the White, White Panther, Panther Party. Party. Yeah. Beautiful wife, wife Jeannie Jeannie. She's the Ministress. <laughs> Everybody smokes cigarettes. That's, everybody, that's a hanging out at the artist workshop yeah. there. That's, that's so Detroit, man, with the, all different kinds of people hanging together. And yeah. tongue out like that, that's so Detroit, yeah. too. Well, we had a clique like of about 20 people, right? Yeah, essentially it as it evolved yeah. and everybody had sort of like a title a working title what yeah. they did jesse crawford was a spiritual advisor mm -hmm. and we had a minister of information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who was that uh, I, I don't, we need to find that information we look where we to find that information about the minister of information funny thing about information you need a minister <laughs> to find it but this was all in fun. This was all joking. It was this all, is something I don't think people understand about us that it was a lot. Of, it was all tongue in cheek, sitting around, sitting hilarious. around a table, smoking yeah. a joint, having a good old time. Yeah. We had a lot of good times at the artist workshop. We had this. Remember the big round table we had, that big long table, and we all be pounding, playing drums like a bunch of uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Aborigines, wild. Aborigines high on peyote. Where the photograph of us was taken with the upside down American flag. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that famous photograph that's in the first album where everyone asked, did you actually pin that red White Panther button into your chest? I said, hell yes, man. It was taped. And when we first played that place, the artist workshop, uh, John Sinclair's wife, Lenny, pulled the plug out on us. Yeah. I remember that. Should you I... play too loud. Yeah. You play too loud. We were definitely the rebel, <laughs> they used to the rebel us. element yeah. of the city. This was uh, we had a lot, lot of, uh, lot of attention from law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Spotlights in the windows. All oh, that. Yeah. Spot checks uh, in the practice room, breaking, upsetting our rehearsals so they could come in and make sure we weren't starting a revolution right there. Maybe it was some of the press we were getting, mm -hmm. some of the early press that we got. But the, the parents would read about this MC5 band and what it was doing with the kids and this talk of sex, drugs, and rock and roll that the fear factor started to, to uh, was originated. Send back. a posse to get us. This is the, the, the uh, a gig we played on Belle Isle in Detroit. It was called The Love Inn, and it happened on my birthday in 1967, April 30th. We were all much younger then. 67 yeah. is the year of love. Right? There's Sinclair. John Sinclair. Oh, he's got his third eye. That's one of those little stamp third eyes you buy, mm -hmm. and it's got LSD in it. Got, it's like a, a patch before it's time. Mm -hmm. We don't know that guy. Can you feel the love, Mike? I feel the love, I can baby. feel the love. And... Uh, we were selected somehow or another to play at this event. It was very early in our existence. MC5, we used to play this kind of stuff all the time. It really, anyone could give us a half a chance, we'd show up and play. This, this was at the beginning of the hippie movement in Detroit. Yeah, I wasn't quite a hippie then, was I? No. No, you were still a... I was a college boy. You were a college student, yes. And you guys made me... You guys actually stopped me from going to college. You said you either quit that Wayne State business or you, and you join this band or go back to school. Yes, we, we corrupted you totally. And we Absolutely. diverted you from your 
That's right, you, you did that. And the first you, time I actually got high and I, re I really finally got Jimi Hendrix, the Jimi Hendrix experience. <laughs> I took some good LSD and I played with a broom mm -hmm. for about five or six hours over and over and over again. And I've never been the same ever since. So you were going to figure out the uh, secret to antimatter. Yeah, at that, that, that life's, night. Your life's, that, that I night. think I had the secret to it at that night. Too. I've since forgot. It was only 38 years ago. Ah, look who's that. that was One of Detroit's finest. One of Detroit's. Scoping out the situation. Okay, I want a squad over here on. Police. Yep, and we put somebody behind the grassy knoll over there. That's Honky. Wow. That's Barbara Hoffman. Honky. Honky. Yeah. And there's Rob Tyner, our okay. man. With adjusting that, That's our really great PA system. That was our folks. high tech. Yeah. That was state of the art in those Whoa. days. Oh, Michael, look at you, how high your bass this, was. Yeah. Love it. Hi, Rob. How you doing? Look at that. Look at this. Oh, this is like straight out of high school. You got a yeah. Fender Dual Shoulder? Well, I graduated in 66, and I was, I'd was i be 18 years old then. That's right. Yeah. You were 19. Me too. You were a year yeah. older, right? You're a year older than me. I used to be, but This no, is one of our age. first gigs. Man. This is one of the, yeah. This, What's I the just, SE stand for? Uh, I don't know. So, Southeast? Southeast. I don't know, SE. What tunes were we doing right, right then, Wayne? Oh, yeah, man, I, don't, I remember we did Dennis, looking at man. you that Oh, I look really young and Dang. young and innocent. What happened? Oh, my God. <laughs> Art and music were a big part of the counterculture. Well, what, it, the movement was toward expression. Oh, no. It was really? toward expression, self-expression, self-determination, freedom, mm -hmm. and peace and love. That was what the hippie, that's the hippies, uh, that's the code, as opposed to violence. Get Death, them. destruction, like, murder, as, a, as opposed to right, bombing, killing, you know, maiming, stamp, conspiracy, conspiracy, stampeding, ethnic cleansing, ethnic cleansing. blondes. Blondes were an important racial profiling. Part. The blondes were crucial. And at this point in, in everything, it was very non-confrontational. Right. Everybody was. It was about this kind of recognizing yeah. the beautiful things. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. beautiful in its way. Yeah, like, like right. Everything's like cool. Here. We're going to do music cool. and art. Mm -hmm. We love this. The trees are great. Mm -hmm. Everybody's beautiful. Mm -hmm. No confrontational thing. Right. It hadn't evolved into anything. To stay it, away from it, that. It was embryonic at that time. And it was wide open. Oh, yeah. The cat's look beautiful. At the kitty's beautiful. The girl's beautiful. The teeth are beautiful. Life is beautiful. Freedom the glasses is beautiful. are beautiful. You know, it's like John Sinclair's John, beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's, we're going to do music now. And everything's, everything's just great. Uh, these In the guys, beginning. they're trying to hug the uppermost top of the tree because this is nice. a love end. They're nice. loving the trees. The trouble is getting back down out of the tree. You wanted a, uh, a dream catcher. That's a dream catcher, yes. Yeah. So so these catch these the were bad popular vibes. in the 60s. You had, to, yeah. you had to catch bad vibes back in those days when, when you had love-ins. Right. That, I think that's Steve McKay, isn't it? Who on sax? Remember the sax player? That he later yes. He played with the Stooges. Yeah. He really got into the free jazz thing. Yeah. I think that, is that him? Or? I don't know. I don't it know. Doesn't look it doesn't much. matter. It's a tenor saxophone. Yeah. Frank Bach. Hey, Frank Bach. It's Frank Bach from the Up, uh, a brother band. Wasn't he a minister of something in the White Panthers? It was Jerry There's, Duncan? Yes, that was he, no, was. he was the original hippie of Detroit. Was, he was, and he was he the first good. hippie that was in the Life magazine. Yeah, I was shocked that at the length of his hair. Yeah. I was. I was shocked by him. Period. He was a good guy. Yeah, he was. He was funny. He was. He's an artist too. He's probably still around. One of the original hippies. See, it's getting dark now. That's when the riots started. Because the police wanted to shut this thing down, and uh, they did, like did a sweep through the crowd, and it was like the the cavalry was attacking, and all the kids would run away, and everybody was laughing like it was a game. Then the police would regroup, and they'd charge in again. But after a while, like the, the you know, as they started playing polo from horseback with people's heads. Mm -hmm. But this differentiated from when we were in Chicago, because in Chicago, the kids in the back of the, uh, at Lincoln Park, weren't they throwing rocks and bottles at the police? But here, the kids, were the kids throwing rocks and bottles at the police? No, everybody this is a police was just riot? trying to get out of there. That was, it was the just thing. fear yeah, and scare. Was Everybody was trying to scatter them, get them out of here, yeah. get off the damn island. And you couldn't get with. off the island. That was, you know, why mm -hmm. it, it just, it got, it was like a, a Custer's last show. day. Yeah, right? you couldn't get away. And, yeah. and I mean. Uh, and that's us getting away right there.
Do you remember what the press angle is on after that riot from the from the yeah, media? Yeah, uh, love in turns to hate. hate. Yep. <laughs> it was it was pretty nasty at the end, man. With the the police, I mean, they just beat everybody's ass. Yep. And that was the first time I ever really experienced, you know, the thuggery of the police, you know, that they just did whatever they wanted to do. I mean, that really was like a polarizing experience for me to really like, you know, they're on one side and, and we we're on another other. side. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you grow up thinking that, well, the policeman's your friend mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you see him just, mm -hmm. you know. To serve and protect. Yeah, and, and then you witness them just beating people senseless for no reason. It, it tends to um, uh, radicalize you. I think in our youthful naivety, we thought that what we were on to with this, this cultural explosion was that it was going to grow and grow and grow, right? And it did. This is the, the, whole, the whole beginnings of the radical student movement, the anti-war movement and all that. Early days. Great days, great days, the beginning.